Sergio Lorraine, was a renowned Chilean photographer known for his contribution to the world of documentary and artistic photography in the 20th century. He was only 28 years old when he realized the dream of many photographers, money, fame, and recognition. Lorraine stood out for his ability to capture everyday moments and depict urban and rural life in Chile with a unique sensitivity. His work was characterized by strong compositions, attention to detail, excellent use of light and shadow, as well as his focus on spontaneity and introspection. Like other great Latin American photographers such as Manuel Alvarez Bravo or Graciela Iturbide, patience and calmness were essential. Similarly, Sergio would play with children or converse with sailors and women in Valparaiso, and only then would he draw his Leica 3C. For Lorraine, the photographer needed to become invisible, like a chair. Sergio preferred vertical frames and unusual camera heights, often placing his camera at ground level. Although he did some color work when covering an earthquake in Chile for Magnum, the vast majority of his work is in black and white. During Sergio Lorraine's lifetime, several of his books were published, The Rectangle in the Hand in 1963, The House in the Sand with Pablo Neruda in 1966, Chile in 1968, Valparaiso in 1991, London in 1998, and Sergio Lorraine in 1999. Agnes Sire, curator of Magnum Agency, has been responsible for preserving and disseminating Lorraine's legacy, of which around 2,700 contact sheets from 36 exhibitions with their respective negatives are still preserved. The life and work of Sergio Lorraine, perhaps the most important Chilean photographer, exudes an aura of genius and mystery. In the 1950s and 1960s, he produced a rare and brilliant body of work that remained virtually unknown in Chile until his death. This obscurity was partly due to the fact that his work was primarily published in international media, but, above all, because he himself prevented its widespread dissemination. Sergio Lorraine was born into an affluent family in Santiago, Chile, on November 5, 1931. However, Lorraine refused to succumb to the allure of wealth. He always had the urge to forge his own path without assistance from anyone, so he soon abandoned his forestry engineering studies at the University of Berkeley in California. He purchased a Leica 3C with which he would take his first photographs and dedicated himself to wandering and observing. Later, he traveled with his family for eight months through parts of Europe and the Middle East after the tragic loss of his younger brother in a horseback riding accident. In Italy, he was captivated by the photos of Giuseppe Cavalli. Upon returning to Chile in the mid-1950s, he settled in Valparaiso, which would ultimately become the backdrop for much of his photographic work in different stages. There, he had a small home laboratory that allowed him to develop his photos. His first significant assignment came quickly as he received commissions from the Brazilian magazine O Cruzeiro. In the 1950s, Lorraine moved to La Reina, an affluent and secluded neighborhood in Santiago. In 1953, he presented his first exhibition, and his images were so well received that two foundations commissioned him to portray the lives of street children. In 1956, he sent some of these photos to the Museum of Modern Art in New York and, in return, received a check signed by none other than Edward Station who was the director of the museum at the time. In 1959, the British Council awarded him a scholarship to photograph London. It was there that he produced some of his finest photographic work. This is not an exaggeration, as evidenced by the fact that the French master Henri Cartier-Bresson invited him to join the acclaimed Magnum Photos Agency. To test his worthiness, Cartier Bresson assigned him a challenging task that no one had managed to accomplish, traveling to Sicily to photograph the Mafia, specifically a powerful capo named Giuseppe Russo. Lorraine spent three months in Sicily, Naples, and Calabria. He not only photographed the Mafia up close but also from within, 
capturing not just a portrait of the infamous Capo but dozens of images of him in various everyday situations, posing, eating, sleeping. This remarkable outcome opened the doors to Magnum as an associate and earned him recognition as a gifted photographer. However, years later, Lorraine himself admitted that this work was a mistake. He had indeed photographed the Mafia, but with such intimacy, from the inside, that these images, in reality, glorified it. That was Sergio Lorraine. From this point on, his career became even more unstoppable. With the support of Magnum, the Chilean became an exceptional reporter, producing outstanding works and gaining significant international recognition. In 1963, he published his first book, The Rectangle in the Hand, and photographed prominent figures like Pablo Neruda. He also documented social exclusion in Valparaiso, and colonialism in Algeria, publishing for prestigious publications such as Paris Match, Life, and The New York Times. However, in 1968, Sergio Lorraine's life took a complete turn as he began to put photography aside to focus on nurturing his soul. He started practicing yoga and deep reflection. His work as a magnum photographer did not satisfy him. While he accomplished much of the work that made him famous at the agency, none of it mattered significantly to him as a human being. There wasn't enough time to immerse himself in each work. Everything was too fast-paced, and he needed to get closer to himself. He yearned to contemplate the world more deeply, so he later left Magnum, taking his negatives and destroying them, as his intention was to leave photography behind forever. Fortunately, luck allowed us to have some of his work because another Magnum photographer had many copies of Lorraine's work. That photographer was none other than Joseph Kaudelka, who adored and admired him. Thanks to Kaudelka, part of Lorraine's work became known and was safeguarded, despite the author's attempts to destroy it. From that moment on, Lorraine retired to live in the Chilean mountains near Valparaiso, but he rarely communicated with the outside world. Almost no one knew exactly where he was. He became a kind of hermit, distancing himself from family and friends. Fortunately, not entirely as he maintained some correspondence with a few people until he passed away in his home in Tulahuan, near Ovalle, Chile, at the age of 80 on February 7, 2012, accompanied by the peace of his Buddhist faith and his closest collaborators.
In the corner of time and light, where dreams and reality converge in an ethereal dance, we find Sergio Larraín, a Chilean photographer whose legacy was woven into the threads of introspection and contemplation. His life, like his photographs, becomes a window into a deep and mysterious world, a lesson for all of us on the search for meaning on this vast canvas we call life. Sergio Larraín walked the streets of Santiago and traversed the far reaches of the world with his camera as his compass. In each image, he captured not only the physical appearance of his subject but also their essence, their soul. His ability to seize fleeting moments in time and give them eternal resonance reminds us of the importance of being fully present in our own lives. The sensitivity and passion Larrain poured into his work were a reflection of his intrinsic nature. He often retreated from public life, seeking solitude and silence to connect with himself and the world around him. In a world filled with distractions and constant noise, his example invites us to pause, to delve into our own souls, and to discover what truly matters. As he explored life through the lens of his camera, Sergio Larraín taught us the importance of authenticity and sincerity in our actions. His images speak of a deep empathy for his subjects, a desire to understand and capture truth in its purest form. In a world full of masks and artifice, his approach urges us to be true to ourselves and embrace our own authenticity. Sergio Larraín's journey, marked by its ups and downs, shows us that life does not always follow a linear path. His periods of withdrawal and his tireless pursuit of beauty and meaning remind us that our lives too are a work in constant evolution. We can learn to embrace the complexity of our own stories and find beauty in moments of introspection and growth. Ultimately, Sergio Lorraine's life is a reminder that art and creativity can be powerful tools of self-expression and connection with the world around us. His legacy inspires us to look beyond the surface, to find beauty in the ordinary, and to explore our own passions with a sense of purpose and authenticity. Thus, in the deep shadows and bright lights of Sergio Lorraine's photographs, we find valuable lessons for our own lives. He teaches us to be mindful, authentic, and passionate in our search for meaning. He invites us to find beauty in imperfection and embrace the complexity of our own journey. Ultimately, Sergio Larraín shows us that, through the lens of reflection and creativity, we can discover the depth and richness of life in all its magnitude. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. This way, you'll always stay up to date with all the videos I produce here. Until the next one. See you later.